My friend, have you seen the girl who just moved in? Shh. Why? That girl drives a car. She doesn't just drive a car. She drives a car. Woo! Did you see it? Hey. How are we going to survive living next door to that person? I know we have to upgrade our cars. We have to upgrade our cars. She's making us look bad. Hey gorgeous and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kopanish Mange and this is how I do things. The show where you send me your questions and I'll let you know how I would do things. Now you can take it as entertainment or use it as advice. Use it, don't use it, take it, don't take it. Do what you will with it. I'm just letting you know what I would do if I was in your shoes. Now today is a Sunday, which means that we are indulging in a cozy conversation. So if you have not got your cup of tea, or your coffee, your cappuccino, whatever it is that you want to drink, head over, pause, go get it quickly, and then come back and join us. So today we're talking about pressure, societal pressure or peer pressure. We think that this thing is just something that the teenagers go through and girls through varsity go through, but honey, I promise you now, societal pressure is everywhere. You will live and die with it. Even people in their 60s, 70s, in retirement are just like, yo, my friend is retiring and moving to a farm. A farm. Everybody else is retiring and, you know, this guy took out his full pension and has decided to do this. Maybe I should take out my full pension. Pressure lives and dies with us. I promise you, we get born pressure. Pressure to walk at a certain age when you're a baby. Pressure to talk at a certain age when you're a baby. And then pressure in order to, to you, for you to do something like another child is doing something. And then we grow up and then we see that this is the picture of life that we're supposed to have. Guys, pressure is everywhere. So we're going to dive into that, answering a number of your guys' questions that you've sent me on Instagram. Now, if you did not know, this show is run on your questions. So if you want to send me a question, head over to my Instagram and look for this picture right here. It is on my Insta story highlights at Kopana Shimange. All you have to do is go to the lavender circle that says how I do things and you'll find this picture right here. It's in my Insta story highlights. Send me whatever picture you feel is always weighing on you, whether it is about being a woman, being, you know, a career lady, um, money, whatever it is, send it through. Listen, before we get into it, I need to ask you a very serious question. And this question has actually been bothering me quite a bit. Have you subscribed to my channel? If you haven't, just just do it. Just just do it. It's either you have been binge watching or you're going to binge watch my channel. So just subscribe. I mean, it costs you nothing. It just lets me know that hey, girl, I like what you're doing. Keep doing it. I support you. And yeah, I need those subscriptions. So just subscribe. All right. So question number one. So the question is, hi, Kapano. I'm having a lot of trouble accepting myself. I'm easily intimidated by beautiful girls, thick girls. I don't know what to do. How do I overcome intimidation? Firstly, God created you to be exactly who you are. If you say you're intimidated by beautiful girls, do you feel as though you're not beautiful yourself? Honey, God made absolutely no mistakes in making you. None whatsoever. He made you and you are his masterpiece. So first and foremost, you are a beautiful girl. You are. You cannot say those girls are beautiful because it means you're leaving yourself out of that equation. You can't ever do that. Don't ever disrespect God and think that you are not beautiful because you are, you really are. And intimidation, um, look, there's always this image that society is portraying and saying that this is the standard of beauty, okay? And I think a lot of us, we fall for it and we try to strive for it, but it becomes very unhealthy for us because now we start to compare ourselves to that image. And if we're not that image, then we find ourselves to be less than and we find ourselves not to be beautiful. And with it, all of us, we may not have what we want and we think as though if I had bigger boobs or if I had curves or if I had a bigger bum or if I was thick like the other girls, then I'd be beautiful. And that's, no, let's, let's stop doing that. It's not going to work. It's never going to happen. You are exactly the way that God wanted you to be whether you are thick whether you are thin whether you are you know super skinny you can't gain weight or you're nice and curvy and you got them thick and thighs love every single part of you the way that it is it starts there 
you know I, that's why i love following people who speak about body positivity of all shapes and all sizes there's no one figure that should be the figure that we want every figure is a real figure every figure is a beautiful figure no matter what shape or size that figure comes in and the way that we stop feeling intimidated is for us to love and accept the way that we have been made and the way that we look love yourself honey never ever have those words ever come out of you again or that thought that those girls are beautiful because you are beautiful first it starts with you it always starts with you so never ever think that i will be beautiful when and never think that a certain group of people are beautiful and everybody who's outside of it including myself is not you can't live like that accept yourself and love yourself as the masterpiece that god has created you to be okay so question number two Hi Kapano, I hope you're well. I'm a second year student at UJ. So currently all my friends are in a relationship and I'm so under pressure to be in a relationship right now. Worst part is I'm pressurized to get to go have sex because it's impossible for the next guy that I'm dating to marry me. Can you kindly advise on this? And one last thing, I've never really experienced my heartbreak. And my friends say that I have to go through the bad ones to get to the right one. And they also told me that experience is very important. And without experience, men are just going to break my heart and all that. What a load of nonsense. Number one, when it comes to this, is find yourself better advice. <laughs> really, find yourself better advice. I look back at my 21-year-old self and I probably could have said all of this nonsense because I was an instigator when I was younger. I was the number one person to tell you to drink. I was the number one person to tell you to go experiment with guys. And now I look back and I'm just like, what were you saying? You're not under pressure to do nothing. Nothing. I look back and I look at the girls who had the strength to withhold and the girls who had their own character and just were not intimidated by everybody else and I'm just like I wish I was I was a bit stronger but I had to go through those things in order to learn right look you're not pressurized to do anything honestly if your friends are just like listen you know you have to kiss a bunch of frogs to get to a prince it's nonsense there are many people who meet the people that they're going to marry as their first boyfriends many it happens it's not it's not a myth it's not a joke people start dating in high school and they get married People, you don't have to experiment. You don't have to kiss a lot of frogs. You don't have to sleep with all these men in order for you to be married and happy. What life experience does your friends have in order to guarantee that that's a fact? They can't guarantee that that's a fact. It's a lie. Go find older people. If you don't have a sister, I'll be your sister. And I'll tell you right now, if I count all the females that I know of, married as virgins. I've got multiple friends who are married as virgins. Married the people that they met early in their life. So early varsity, or high school they are girls who dated multiple people and then finally found the one they are people who had to kiss a lot of frogs and finally found the one there's no one set way of doing things in life that's my point sometimes you need to work things out for yourself in your quiet space so that when you do meet the pressure later on you are able to face the pressure having worked through your own issues or by yourself so do that try that get a journal write your true thoughts in your journal hide your journal and then move on with your life so that you know what to do when you face the pressure of your friends listen when you when it comes to your friends advice there's probably only one friend who will really understand you and have really good advice for you but when it comes from your friendship group don't take that as law because they are just as young and dumb as you are i'm i'm also young young and dumb so i like to take my advice from older people and you can do the same thing too seek advice and take it seriously from people who are older than you I, I i have never and will never take my peers advice as law ever because they are just as young and dumb as i am therefore they can make bigger mistakes or if not the, the same mistakes that i make number three hi kopano can you do a can you do a video on how to do things if you're having a bit of a situation with your in-laws or in-laws to be Blending families is very difficult and I'm very fortunate to have a very welcoming, understanding, um, amazing in-law family. So they're really good. They're amazing people. But that doesn't mean that you're not going to have, you know, little speed bumps or little, you know, it's not going to be perfect. 
because you grew up with this group of people you know how these group of people work and that's your family and now you're blending into a new family you don't grow up with these people you don't really know how they work and you're trying to learn the best thing that i did and that i learned from somebody else was to humble yourself with your with your in-laws and learn as much as you possibly can about their ways and what they do and then once you've learned and gained an intelligence about this family you can then come in with what you find is important or what you would like to change or how you'd like to approach the situation in the art of war my darling everything in life is a war and in the art of war the best thing you can do is gain an intelligence on your opposition now it sounds weird for me to call your in-laws your opposition but they are just people on the other end learn as much as you can how do they think how do they like things how do they do things what motivates them all of those things because that intelligence is going to help you to learn how to speak to them how to get your way with them and how to manage them which is very important there are ways that you can if you know and understand how a person thinks then you're able to manage how you speak to them and manage how you get to a specific outcome having arguments and wars and all of those things with your in-laws is not a good thing so if you learn as much as you possibly can about your in-laws open-minded no judgment learn as much as you possibly can moving forward you know the best way to deal with your in-laws that is my approach learn humble yourself and just learn 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 as much as you can because that's going to help you in managing them moving forward having a bad relationship with your in-laws is just going to stress your man okay it is and that's not fair it wouldn't be fair for him to fight with your in-laws either with his in-laws which is your family so try your best and then number four good morning kopano good morning i love people who greet first but any who's can you do a video on how to save for a wedding um for people who want to have a wedding but not break the budget okay cool so when it comes to saving for a wedding i'll give you some advice from a person who's at a wedding you will get a lot of pressure from other people on how the wedding should be and you'll get pressure about what you should spend on what you shouldn't spend on how it should look how many people should come when you're saving for a wedding it the most important thing that you need to do is try and get all your costs ahead of time and get a per head cost and i'll tell you why if you're going to spend a thousand rand per head per person who comes to your wedding this is all inclusive the band the the, the caterers everything you're going to think twice about who you're going to invite to your wedding. And when you meet somebody who comes to you and says, no, we can't have less than 200 people at the wedding. You look at them and say, are you going to pay that thousand rand for those people who are coming to that wedding? No, I am. I'm spending that thousand rand. And when I look at weddings and what I see now about what the pandemic has actually helped in terms of weddings, people are having small, beautiful weddings, but they're extremely lavish. So instead of having a 450 rand per head wedding and having 200 people at the wedding, people are having a 2000 rand per head wedding with only 50 people at the wedding. Now, I can tell you now, if you're spending 2000 rand per head, it means that you are at the most luxurious location. You have the most beautiful food. Everything is five stars. And that's what you need to decide on when it comes to budgeting for your wedding is how do I want my wedding to feel and how do I want it to look? Having that uber luxury wedding with few, 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 few people means that you'll be spending more per head, but the experience will be amazing. So you need to decide the two major things that's going to help you budget for a wedding is numbers. How many people do I want a big or a small wedding and the feel? Do you want to go uber luxury, uber detail, you know, all the trinkets, all the nice small things? Or do you just want a general level of, I just want good food and, you know, good wines and just good enough tables? Because that's going to affect everything about your wedding. So if you really want to budget for your wedding, do your research. Inquire about the specific prices and always add an extra 100 or 200 rand per head. Because whatever your venue tells you, is the price for the venue add some extras because you're going to have to add extra lights or add extra sound or add extra something 
and always come down to a budget. You'll have a total budget and your budget comes down to 100,000 Rand. Always divide it by the number of people who are there so you know what is the price per head. Trust me, price everything as a price per head. It's gonna be the best thing you ever do for yourself. Good luck with your wedding, congratulations, and I hope that it's a beautiful one. Enjoy. And finally, number five is a question about managing your time. Hi Kopano, thank you for your insightful videos. Thank you very much. May you please speak about time management in one of your upcoming videos and please share your journey with God, thank you. So I'll share my journey with God in a different video, but in terms of time management, how does life pressure come in or you know affect time management? I'll tell you how. There are different people and different things in our life that demand time from us. I'll make an example of myself. My daughter demands time, my husband demands time, food demands time, you know, my clients demand time for my business. Everything demands time. And in terms of managing your time, it is about managing the demands that life has on your time. So the number one thing is, can you manage the demands of all the different areas of your life? How I manage the demand of my daughter is that she isn't on quite a strict schedule. So I know that I start with that. So when I look at my 18 hours that I'm awake, I look at, okay, cool. Um, how many hours does my daughter take and where does she take that time? That is immovable. Nothing's going to make that move unless I get somebody to help. So that is immovable. Other things are flexible. When I work on my business, when I work on club shears, when I work on how I do things, those are things that I can move around, but it fits around my daughter. So you need to think, what are the immovable times? If you have a nine to five, getting to work at nine and leaving at five is an immovable thing. So you have to fit things all around it. Then everything else you need to find out, can I get help for this? Can I get somebody to take over this piece of time? How much time does it, does it genuinely take? And then you fit it before and after your work times. The thing that helped me manage my time the best is number one, to write down my time and when I need to work and how I need to work. And the second thing is waking up early, realizing that staying up late is not gonna work for me, it's going to actually harm me. But when I wake up early, then there's no demands on my time. That's why I wake up early to do my work. No one is demanding time. There's no phone calls, there's no emails, there's nothing. When I wake up between 5 a.m. and 8 a.m., it is mine and mine alone. So look for that time that you can find for yourself. I recommend waking up early. I hate waking up early, but honestly, it's the best thing I could have ever done for myself. All right, beautiful people, that is it for today's episode of Cozy Conversations. My tea is done, done, done. It's even cold now. I hope that you guys enjoyed that one because I really did. Pressures in life come from different situations. They come from different angles. And honestly, if we learn how to be happy with ourselves, with our goals, and stand firm on what we believe in and what is important to us, then the pressures of life get a little less difficult to deal with. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode and I hope that you have liked, commented, and subscribed. If you have any questions for me, remember to go to my Instagram to send it to me. Until later days, beautiful people, have an amazing Sunday. I'll see you again tomorrow, 7.30 shop. Bye. Hey gorgeous, thank you so much for joining me for this Cozy Conversations. I hope that you'll be joining me tomorrow because every single day I launch a brand new video premiering at 7.30 South African time. So if you have not subscribed, click over here. And don't forget to switch on your notification bell so you know when I'm uploading my next video. If you have not gone over to my website, www.kopanashimagi.com, then head over there right now because I've got a free ebook all about boosting your confidence. So until tomorrow, I'll see you then. Mwah.